All right, cool. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jim McGinn. I'm part of the marketing team here at APR, and thanks for joining us for uh, APR Live today. We're going to drill into the Porsche program here at APR. Uh, with me today, we have Tyler Wolf. He's been the head uh, engineer and calibrator on this project, and Aaron Anell, our APR brand manager. Aaron's been with the organization for about 12 years. Uh, Tyler's been with us just over five and a half years here. So both guys that know their stuff. Um, we're going to take some of your questions today. We're also going to allow these guys to kind of drill into what we've been doing, uh, big picture, and also into the details, which are very important for us here at APR. So uh, without any further ado, I'll step in here and there to take some of your questions, but I'm going to turn it over to Tyler and Aaron and let them uh, give you a rundown of what we got going on here at APR. Cool. Yeah, so this is pretty informal. Um, we're going to keep checking the comment section, just kind of figure out what kind of questions you guys have. We'll read them off. Jim will read them off. And... Uh, let us answer can those can barely questions. hear you. You can barely hear us? All right. Well, hopefully everybody can hear us now. So we're going to talk about what we did with the Porsche program, what kind of set us apart in the marketplace. Uh, Tyler has started on the Porsche program probably about, I'd say, a little over two years ago. Um, and one of the first things we did was work on getting into the ECU, and we developed the first port flash for this platform for the 992 and for the 718. And... Uh, we wanted to delay how long, like when we started releasing software because we knew once we put it out in the wild, that would be copied and everybody would have port flashing. So essentially, we worked on the 718, got through uh, various tunes on that, and then jumped into the 991.2. And uh, I think we can go and talk about some of the things that we do differently on that. Yeah. So as Aaron said, we started off with the uh, 718 platform. That was our first Porsche that we got in the building. It's a pretty easy transition to get into. We specialize in turbocharged direct injection motors. It's a four cylinder, very similar to Volkswagens and Audis and other stuff we would deal with. So it was a pretty easy car to transition into. Uh, so we spent probably about a solid year of development on that. Uh, we took that car all over the country. It's been to Road Atlanta, it's been to BIR, it's been to Bright. Barber, it's been to the half mile drag strip in Ocala, it's been to our local drag strip in Quarter Mile in Montgomery. Uh, we've pretty much taken that car all over the place, beat the crap out of it. It's got 20,000 miles of just hard abuse. Pretty much everybody here in the building has driven the car too, which has been fantastic. Allows us to get feedback from everybody's different perspectives. Everybody has different driving styles, how I drive it, it's probably not how you drive the car. So uh, that's been very helpful in the development process as well. So. We took a long time. We wanted to learn, uh, instrument the cars. The car had about 40 sensors put on it, all the MoTeC uh, dash that we had in there. Uh, and then uh, that was part of the development process, make sure we don't cause any damage, that way we can make the car reliable to make sure we have things that make performance products such as, you know, what hardware needs to be uh, upgraded, what else needs to be done. But uh, it really gives us insight as well to see how the factory ECU and everything and the hardware are performing. You need one to go of the other. Everything in the ECU is modeled, and once you start to take these cars and um, push power at all, it starts to break all the models. So all the safeties and everything else that you guys are trying to rely on and make sure are still there from the factory have now been broken as we've upped the horsepower. So those are things having the sensors allow us to go back to, go over, remodel the ECU, have it correctly, so when you are out on track, the car will last all day on track. So, so it looks like it looks like we have some. It looks like we already have some questions in there. Um, Let's read them off and see if we can answer them real quick. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on some of the questions that are coming in live. We've also taken some in advance here, but one of the things that we've seen uh, big picture is questions on hardware development. What sure. we're gonna be doing, where we're gonna be moving forward with Porsche there. So it might be an opportunity to take people into the garage, kind of show them. Exactly yeah, let's do that. Going. Yeah, we can yeah. walk down to the garage here. We can show you some of the hardware that we have coming out for the uh, 992 and for the 718. Um, we also have some existing hardware that we've had for about 15 years that fits on nearly every single Porsche model out there. There's just a few exceptions. You may want to be a little louder in here. Yeah, yeah let us know if we got to be louder in here. Uh, we have these LED lights that have some fans on them and they're pretty loud. So I guess one of the first things that we are going to be making that we have almost ready to release is the exhaust system for the 718. So it's going to be sold in about five configs down and you will be given a straight pipe on both sides here. Comes out and then you get our base tip option. Uh, from there, if you have a valve system, you have our valve actuator right here. 
which despite the fact that there's no mufflers on it, when you actually run the valve, it does quiet down the system in, in uh, valve mode or like in drive mode, normal mode, and uh, changes the tone. But what's really gonna come into play here is that we are going to be selling um, an extra muffler, and I can show you that real quickly. We're gonna be selling two extra mufflers with the system. So basically, it's a V-band system. You can pop the muffler in and out real easily. And you can put one on one side or you can put one on, on the other side. You can run both if you really want to quiet down the system. But to be honest, I think most people are probably going to run just the straight pipe sections on the car. Um, it sounds phenomenal. And as far as uh, the valve goes, this is what it looks like here. It's the valve section. And this is near, this is nearly finished. Um, this is one of the last, uh, I guess prototypes I'd say before we go ahead and launch it. And as you can see, it's all the V bands that have the inner uh, locking gasket type connector. Um, and then we have an X pipe here. This is where the tips mount onto the back of it. And for the tips, we have, we have eight different options. So everybody gets this tip here, which is the single wall lightweight tip. It looks pretty good. It's the most standard system, and I think it's going to be pretty good for most people. But if you want to go with a black system, we have a double wall black system, and they are four inches. We have a brushed silver system, and then we have a polished silver system here. And the cool thing is we also have a three and a half inch tip, too, in every single one of these. So you have the option of doing whatever you want to do. Um, but this is what the pipes look like. We have a little bit different flanges coming down here. This is just a pre-production flange. This is gonna look really nice when it's done. And it's, it's all V-bands. And we have these really nice corrugated flex sections here that um, are kind of unlike a lot of flex sections that you see that normally have like the braided material throughout them. Inside of this, it's all um, internally corrugated and basically they don't billow and collapse and cause problems. So that's one of the mo one of the first exhaust systems that we're going to have coming out. That's going to fit on the 718 2 liter, the 2.5S and the 2.5 GTS. And I saw in the questions that someone asked about a GT4 exhaust and we're just not sure on that yet. We haven't had that car. We haven't had a chance to tune it. So we're not really sure which systems will make for it. Um, Let's look at that. Is there any other questions that we got already? Maybe there's some questions on that exhaust that I haven't answered. I'd be happy to answer. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see here. One of the questions that came across earlier was in terms of what are we doing? Like, how are we instrumenting these vehicles? How are we monitoring safety? Oh, yeah. You hit on that a little bit, but I think it's worth telling people just how deep we go, yeah. particularly on these vehicles. So yeah, maybe let's, Tyler let's, can let's walk over the 991. This is our 991.2 Carrera T, which just ran 1041 at the drag strip last week. This has our GTS Stage 3 kit on it currently. As you can see, the turbocharger over here. As you can see, we still have the factory catalyst, factory exhaust, factory headers, inlets are stocked. The only thing on this car that's modified is our calibration, the intercoolers, and the intake pipe. Everything else is OEM. So, where our safety instrumentation comes in, you'll be able to see some of it. Uh, you can see our turbocharger here. We have pre-turbine back pressure. We have pre-catalyst back pressure up here. You have pre-turbine EGT, pre-cat EGT. We also have post-catalyst pressure. So this allows us to see what the pressure differential across the catalyst is and start to see when this is restriction. So, so far, as you can see, these catalysts are pretty large, even though it has not the best radius inlet coming in here. Uh, the divider is okay. It still gets a lot of flow over the core. It's a pretty massive core. Back here is kind of a large plenum and it has a nice radius outlet for good flow. Uh, and then you have the two outlets on here as well. So when the exhaust flaps open up, you get a significant amount of flow through the exhaust system. So as we've seen so far, these things really only have about 200 millibar of uh, restriction in them, which really translates when we put uh, straight pipes on for testing to pretty much no differential pressure across the, at the pre-turbine. It's a little bit different across the uh, wheel, but there's not really much to be had from there other than sound and weight savings. Yeah, so essentially, on a lot of these new Porsche applications, and we've seen this on some of the Audis too, you typically you'd want to replace all this, but we're not seeing a need to do that. So you can keep your car completely emissions compliant. We can, we can go and try to get carb on all this software and you don't have to mess with these usually typically expensive parts yep. um, to get any performance. So as you said, I mean, you're running, I, I don't even remember how much horsepower this is putting out on. 620. 
yeah, 620 at the wheels on ethanol, and this is with a factory turbo upgrade, and it's it's not even breaking a sweat. And then what these sensors here do a lot on the turbocharger, these allows me to remodel all the tables and the calibration in the ECU. So the factory calibration knows exactly what's going on. So now I can recalibrate what the ECT is for all the protections. A lambda needs to come in if it's getting too hot. I can also do turbocharger protections based on the outlet temperatures that we have over here. Yeah. You can see that we have pressure and temperature at the outlet and compressor. We also have pressure and temperature here at the inlet. So this lets me basically model the entire turbocharger in the factory ECU so I can have protections and model what the pressure ratio across the wheel is, have your outlet temperatures, have your EGT temperature protections, have pre turbine pressure limits, and have the factory ECU know no matter where you are, it works just like a different factory now that we've asked and squeezed more out of the car. And, so, and the other thing that Tyler has done on this is he's added in protections that weren't even utilized from the factory. Yes. And part of the reason they weren't utilized is because they're not leaning on the car as hard as we are with tuning. So what, what were some of the extra things that you added in? Uh, some of the extra things we added in was uh, shaft speed. That wasn't a pr factor protection. So, so that's how fast the shaft speed, uh, we have a sensor up here and that measures how fast the turbocharger is physically spinning. Um, yep. I don't even think I can point to it on here yep. right now. The, we have outlet temperature too, which is basically a pressure efficiency. Uh, we have a maximum for that because you'll start to melt intercooler pipes. You start to heat soak the intercoolers and you basically turn the turbocharger instead of from making power into a hair dryer. So that's another thing that we look at that we monitor and want to keep within a safe operating range. Uh, we added that into it. We also added uh, fueling protections that the ECU doesn't have uh, from factory. And what I mean by this is when the car gets to make too much power, it doesn't have a way to derate if you run out of fuel. So yes. at that point when the fuel so, you know, keep talking. I got, I got one question on here that I'm going to answer. When you hit your minimum lambda that you request, which is the lowest, uh, richest amount of fuel you get from ECU, it, it doesn't do anything else to protect the car at that point. So what we've done is add an airflow and torque reduction on top of that to bring the car back down to a safe operating level for the ETT for the vehicle, which we have with the sensor here allowed us to remodel what the actual EGT is for the car so the car knows when it needs to do that. And, and so people are understanding these sensors a little bit more we only use these sensors during development so like as a customer you don't need to add all these sensors to your car they, they wouldn't do anything essentially the ecu has modeling as it's called and when you model something uh it's it's like known conditions so basically once we start tuning the car as tyler said that those models break so we add these sensors during the tuning process so we can adjust all the models so they're correct so now when you go to another person's car they don't need the sensors to still have the same level of protection that we had when we were tuning the car. Yep, it's just there so we can do the due diligence like factory portion does when it comes to the car for you. And so. another question I saw on here, someone asked, uh, you know, what are what all are our plans with this platform? Um, basically right now we have our stage one software, which is just an ECU upgrade that is for 91, 93, 100, 104, and E85 uh, yep. fuel grades. We also have all those variations for the fuel grades that are in Europe as well. Um, we also support the factory GTS turbo, so they just drop right in. We are looking at, like, we can support an intercooler, we can support intake pipes, you can put on a catback exhaust, all that stuff, it just works with our software. We're also tuning currently on the dyno um, a hybrid turbo kit. Um, it's not ours, it's, uh, I don't pure. know, it's, it's a pure turbo kit. And then we're also looking to tune a tile turbo kit. Um, and just see what we can get out of the system. On the, uh, the pure system so far, we're doing 620 on pump gas. Yeah, 93. 620 wheel on pump gas you know, with 93. So um, we're basically going to find, I think, a fuel limitation on that. And uh, we'll, we'll work around that, you know. And then PDK? Yeah, PDK software. I mean, Tyler can go, go to town on that. But PDK software is another big request. Um, it's not required for any of our tunes that we have but it certainly has some benefits once we start adding it to the system. Yep, and a lot of the things that we've fixed with our PDK software is what you guys have run into, uh, particularly the Carrera platform, as you claim it's a 3-4 shift slip, which uh, it's not really a shifting issue, it's just an issue with the gearbox where uh, you guys are experiencing stuff. We've been able to actually figure that out, what causes it and how to fix it. Uh, that's been addressed and it's actually being tested on the hybrid turbo on the dyno right now. So uh, anybody that has a current software, uh, will not run into this issue. Uh, it will only be when you start to add these hybrid turbos and we push for more power than we're currently Yeah, and so in, a, in general on this platform, I mean, we may do a cap-back exhaust on it. Um, this 
platforms, like, are, it's getting a little old, so I don't know if we'll necessarily jump into all that stuff or if we'll just go right to the 992, but we have started making some hardware for the 992 already, including a CapEx. So I think that's probably going to be our jumping off point. And, and maybe if, we'll let, let this market, you know, there's already some really good hardware out there, so. Yeah, we might just support um, some products that are yeah. already out there. That way you guys can run it but still have the software. And another thing I asked, I saw someone ask this uh, maybe yesterday about the headers. Um, we don't have data yet. We're going to try some headers on this car. Yep. As you can see here, um, these headers just visually, they don't look so hot. They don't look so great. So we plan on testing to see if that's actually true or not. Yep. And uh, we'll let you guys know. A little instrument at at the header here to compare what the pressure is at the valve as well as pre turbine pressure and see if changing the headers gives us any improvement in our pumping efficiency or any other changes to the turbocharger. So you want me to, I could drop this down and we can, yeah, we can show them all the stuff, on yep. the top. how it connects. Yeah, Tyler, maybe something else we can hit on. There's been a lot of questions. I think Aaron talked about the 991.2. Yep. There's been a lot of questions on the 718. Yep. And I think it also is worth noting, I mean, we got people watching, we have a ton of customers and fans. The base 718. Um, yep. Correct, and and we're actually possibly looking for one of those for the PDK. Correct, and somebody wants to reach out to us, they can do that on Facebook. Yes. They can call us. Yep. So I think there have been some questions. So you can send us a private message. You can give us a call. Um, but we have a pretty good dialogue with all of our customers, and you know a lot of people bring their own vehicles here, and you know yep. we, we use them to develop products. So yep, and we'll want to have all those cars in house too. We spent a lot of time with the PDK on the launch control strategy. A lot of people out there will just change your launch RPM, but that's only a very small portion of how the whole launch control strategy works. Uh, we've been able to drop the 718 uh, PDK time down from a 385 to a 3350 to 60. And <clears throat> we dropped this down from a 324 to a 2840 to 60. We were cutting 162s with the factory tires at the drag strip uh, with the factory tires in our PDK software. And, and I got to brag on uh, Tyler here for a moment. This is his personal car. When he started doing the, the Porsche programming, uh, he went out and bought one for himself so he could go out there to the track days, beat this thing up every day and figure out exactly what needs to change so he could be dedicated to the platform. And it's just, it's been awesome. So like even back here, this is his own personal car, but it's just, it's loaded up with all the test sensors that we have. So, I mean, how many sensors at 40 something? About 40. And About 40. Yeah, so he made all the harness, or they made all the harnesses for this. It goes to a Motec dash. He's got his personal protection in the back there in, in the form of a roll cage and something else. And uh, it's, just been, it's been awesome. And this is exactly how the car ran when we go to the track. Yeah, so when we went to the track um, and we ran that, not, that 10, uh, 10 4 one it was on the factory tires and factory wheels. Basically, exactly what, you just saw. exactly what you just saw, like no tricks, no mods, nothing, no weight pulled out of it. We actually have weight added to it in the form of a, of a cage, cage in a AR-15 and, and a lot of sensors and some stickers. So it, it's worked out really well and we're really excited to see some of our customers go out there because we know they're going to they're gonna run faster than us. That's going to be easy, especially once the density altitude drops a little bit and they're not in Alabama where it's always hot and swampy. Do we have any 991.2 questions at all in there? Yeah, that was Peters was asking about just that platform in general in terms of what's our plan and what we're doing. I know yeah. you hit on some of the hardware that might be... Yeah, you know, so, I mean, and, uh, the other things that we have, just you, like you were saying, we're going to do some turbo software. We're going to focus on uh, mainly like hybrid turbo systems. So the tile system, and we did that here. And I think, I mean... I think basically the software that we have is going to work for a lot of different turbo setups, but we're going to specifically dial it in for ones like the tile setup. Yep, and then we're going to be also looking into, we're currently working on some fueling solutions for the car as well. Mm -hmm. With the hybrid turbos and E85, there's not enough fuel system there to support as far as I want to push. So we've already got a few things going on in the background that hopefully, you know, in the next couple months we'll be able to do some testing on, have come out and release uh, some solutions so we can keep pushing this platform a little bit farther with the bigger turbos. Um, yeah. But, so, and then if we talk about fueling, you know, everybody asks about E85, is it safe? Do we have the headroom? Um, Tyler's made sure that when we tune for E85, we're not running everything to 100%. He likes to take things up to a certain percentage that he's happy with, and then he leaves that extra headroom in there. So if something were to uh, just be off, essentially, you can still move up or down. And then the system basically doesn't get to a point where like it leans out and then there's a problem. Um, what he's done and added to the system are different safeguards. So basically, 
if you run out of fuel, more or less, if you had a massive problem, you're running out of fuel, it will dive down torque and it'll reduce output. So it, sa it saves the engine. So PDK software is probably at least another month or so out. We're still doing development testing. Uh, the first ones out will be the, for the 718 and for the 99102. It's what we currently have here. We'll have to get our Turbo S back in and do the Turbo S and Turbo PDK software. You just can't take from one and feed to the other, even though they're very similar. They still need to be tuned independently. Uh, the PDK software on the 718 dropped our quarter mile times by about 0.15 seconds in the quarter mile, and it also dropped our 60 foot time by about a tenth of a second from factory. We went from about a 178 factory to a 168 at the drag strip. So not too bad for running the factory tires and uh, not the best track prep, but we we're pretty happy with that. Also, as I said, with the 0 to 60 improvements, uh, we've worked on that as well. There'll be two launch control strategies for those that you have sport chrono. Uh, so by the flick of a button, you'll have a uh, in sport mode, a little bit less aggressive of a launch. So if you have a very low grip situation and you can't put the power down, you'll have something that's a little aggressive, uh, aggressive to give you a better chance maybe on the street, and then I have a Sport Plus setting, which if you go on the drag strip, gives you kind of a more aggressive launch to get you out of the hole and try and get you the best 60 foot as possible. So we've been able to take advantage of the factory calibration strategies and give you multiple options and different uh, outputs. In the All right, let's see. They want to see back into the back window of this Porsche again. Yeah. So. Back here's our personal protection, no alarm systems in Alabama. And then uh, we just it have- has Sensors it's like a 30 round magazine clips, uh, 100 <laughs> rounds a second, I think. I don't remember. I saw it on the news. AR-14. Yeah, AR-14. <laughs> but so then this will also be getting a conversion to a GT3 Cup car for Aero. Uh, a goal, personal goal of mine is to have this go to the track and beat Porsche's lap time record they set with the GT2 RS later this year. So that is one of the goals. And that's, at, that's at Road Atlanta? Yes, that's yeah, at Road Atlanta. So that's going to be awesome. Yep. So we'll probably so, have... Yeah, so maybe we'll talk about the 7 yep. and 8 again. Um, I know a lot of people have asked about ethanol on this and like how come we have ethanol support for this car but we don't on this car. Maybe you can expand into that a little bit. Yep. Uh, the reason we don't have ethanol support for this, I looked into it right away, but uh, 93 and 104, the fuel system on this car is absolutely taxed already. If you want to upgrade and go farther, you're going to have to do uh, injectors, higher pressure pump immediately just to be able to support extra fuel. So there's no extra headroom left to run an ethanol system. You'd be completely out of fuel system with no safety. It's just not possible. So to do it, kind of like other cars, it just didn't come with an oversized fuel system like the 991.2. 992 Carrera just has way, way more than it should from the factory. It's been kind of blessed with some shared parts from other Porsche models that kind of gave it a little bit of a leg up in terms of how far it could go. This was very much out of the box, about 65, 70% of the fuel system was already used factory. So until uh, we have a high pressure fuel, fuel pump solution and injectors, ethanol won't be an option. Once we have that though, and we have the ability to safely add the extra fuel and volumes that we need, then we can always come back and offer new yeah. tune. It's not a problem at all. And the fuel pump on this car, uh, it's one of those Bosch high pressure fuel pumps that don't easily come apart, like all the Hitachi ones that we do for the Volkswagen and Audi models. So that's one of the reasons why we haven't been so quick to make something for it. But, uh, what is your take on so 718, I know we have the GT4. We don't know what we're going to see out of that. The, G, the new uh, the new 4 liter and yep. the GTS and then the GT4. So we'll be tuning both of those. Um, we think that the uh, GTS will probably do pretty well. The GT4, maybe not so much. It might be a little more high strung. Yep. But uh, we'll be running ethanol on both of those because there's likely fueling for that yep. uh, since it's not turbocharged. And ethanol by itself usually gets us some pretty good power gains. So we'll see what's on that. And uh, one thing that we are going to do with all of the Porsche models um, is come out with at-home flashing. Essentially, we will give you a cable, you'll be able to plug in on these cars and change your maps. So that's been the big thing is we don't have program switching on these things. Well, you're going to be have, you'll have basically a method to do that at home. It won't be like we do with the cruise control stock, but with the cable that we give you, you just plug in, you'll be able to use a computer, any kind of laptop and, and get the program that you need. And for those that have asked for what mods would be good for this car. Unfortunately, there's not a lot out in the marketplace right now, but from all our testing, when we have the sensors on the car, the track tees we did, the two biggest things that'll help you, particularly if you're a road course guy for making the power, will be to find a way to upgrade and improve the intercooler cooling system. Uh, there's not a ton of room for cores, but if you could increase the capacity or work on the flow rate, uh, if you, any way you could improve that will help you substantially in keeping a more consistent intake air temperature, especially in very, very hot climates like Road Atlanta in June. 
Uh, the other thing would be um, intakes and turbo inlets would be a nice way to improve the efficiency on the turbo. The, in, the inlet on this thing is, I mean, it's a nightmare. It's, yeah. it's not like just a tube. It's like a tube that comes up and it wise out. It's just, yeah. you know, you're going to make something pretty specific. It's not something that's it's not, very it, easy to get to either, unfortunately. It's, it's not easy, but if somebody does all start to offer those things in the market, those would be the two biggest power adders in my opinion that would give you the most help to be able to make the car more efficient and go faster. Yeah, on our end, I see us making this catback system, which will be available later this year. Other hardware, um, I'm not so sure if we're gonna have anything so quick out of it. It's mainly gonna be software and this and catback exhaust on this car particularly. You guys may have hit on this a little bit, but you've taken this out yep. to oh, yeah. a variety of track days. I mean do you have a little perspective on when you took this thing out, the cars you were going up against in terms of the Porsche family? Oh, what's the GT3 yeah. RS day? Yeah. 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 That was the most fun. It was lots of the, uh, the Smoky Mountains trip. Uh, sorry, the Smoky GT club. Uh, we went up there. We were the only uh, 718 up there. We got a nice little uh, let in because we were in a GT car. Uh, but we had some nice friends at GMP who helped us get into that. And uh, Ian was driving that day, and I was sitting in the passenger seat slowing him down with my heavy butt. But uh, that car was keeping up with GT3 RSs down the back straights of Orlando. They couldn't pull away from us. We pretty much really got passed by nobody the entire day. Now, Ian is a pro driver, so that does help considerably. But as I said, when we were in straight lines, it, no, no car was pulling away from us. And the handling on the 718 chassis is just phenomenal. We were running uh, Michelin tires that day, and Ian was pulling about 1.4, 1.5 Gs on those tires for the corners, and the car just wanted more. So, uh, Brakes would be a good place to start helping you the track days. You might look into something like a AP racing kit or something along those lines for those of you who want to go hardcore, probably the DS111 pad. Um, but absolutely, for the money that you get, this is probably the best value buck you could get for a Porsche you buy on, on the newer cars. So, so just the calibration on the ECU at the time, it was pretty impressive. And this car has been to multiple tracks now. We've had it up to VIR, we've had it to Rome Atlanta been out the barber uh, it's been all over the country so lots of torque testing to make sure it was durable and reliable and work and then uh, one other hardware things that I didn't mention because we're not making it we made this about 15 years ago for various other Porsche models and Volkswagen Audi models and it's our diverter valve I've taken it apart here to show you how it works um, essentially it is it's not like a lot of the other valves that you see on the market. A lot of ones that you see are piston based and the piston has to travel up and down the tube. You have to keep it lubed up and in the middle of the winter, like it tends to lock up and get stuck. So what we did is we made a uh, diaphragm based valve and basically it's, it's a maintenance free design. So this valve here, it, it uh, pops up and down just like this, uses this, this diaphragm that's extremely it's extremely a high temp material. It's really strong. It's not like those factory valves that you've seen on some of the old GTIs, but essentially this allows us to have a valve that is uh, maintenance free and it's the diverter valve. And this car, um, the 718 has it, the 991.2 has it, and it really works on almost all of the Porsche, um, all the Porsche turbo models, except for, except for like a few, like the 997, dot one and the 992 don't it doesn't work on that but it works on cars all the way back to like the 944 uh, it fits perfectly on like the 996 it's probably the best thing in the market for it and we've been selling it for 15 years and it just it just works so it's called the r1 diverter valve they're inexpensive works on everything yep it's perfect yep. hey so just a couple things uh frank you've asked if we can try to answer all the questions via messenger the ones we don't get to i think we'll most certainly try to do that yeah definitely um can we hear the exhaust yes shortly we'll fire that up for you um uh, tyler there were some questions about the oem 60 clutch yep. um from michael i'll let you hit on that and then there were also some questions about i think there was a couple people that asked the purported effects of the 85. Oh. Um, so from your experience maybe you can give some insight as to what we've encountered and what you've seen yeah uh, from our experience so far with the 718 platform, we really haven't had any issues with uh, manual clutches holding the power. They seem to hold up pretty darn well. Um, if you're worried about that or having issues, we offer multiple torque outputs now. So uh, with our basic tune, it has a normal mode and sport mode. So by the change of a button, you can change how much torque it makes. But we've also seen the request from a bunch of you guys, the manual gearboxes, to can we have the normal output torque file, but with the sport horsepower file. So, we have obliged for that. We do know how to do it. So if something you're interested in, we can make you the normal torque level, which will be that torque curve flat all the way out, kind of like OEM, 
but you'll just get all the horsepower up top too. So you'll have a little bit less of the torque down low, but it'll give you more of that naturally aspirated power band you're looking for and that margin of safety if you're looking for that. I haven't seen any issues with it. I haven't really heard of anybody that's run into an issue with the tor torque on the 718s uh, having any issue with the manual gearboxes. So I don't know if I'd say to be too worried about it, but as I said, we do have options. This is something that will help put your mind at ease. Uh, for the E85 question, no, I haven't seen any ill effects. We've pretty much run the 911 and a bunch of other cars here. We have the RS5, S3s, Golf Rs, and we've run pretty much everything on E85 years. here for many years with it. We really have not seen any ill effects to it. The one thing I would recommend, uh, which we've said for a while, which I've seen backed up by Audi as well, is for about every three tanks of ethanol, I would recommend running one full tank of 93 through the system to kind of clean it out and lubricate the parts. Uh, and then you can go back to running ethanol again. So about every, like I said, every three tanks of ethanol, one tank of pump gas, and you would be good to go. So, so uh, do you have any other questions that we can huh? read off here? And yeah. before we hop over to the 992, actually, do we want to fire this up? and? Yeah, let's fire it up and let it uh, idle a little bit. How's your hand, Conan? It's great. <laughs> Alright, so this configuration is with no mufflers. We do have the valve in the back, but I'm going to have it in sport mode so the valve will be open anyways. Um, so basically, our base configuration that we're going to sell this exhaust in is, is very similar to this. So it's just straight pipes all the way through. If it's too loud for you, you can add one muffler or you can add two mufflers. So it's up to you. If there's any questions, let's add, ask them, you know, before we go to the 992. Uh, let's see here. Mitchell's been pretty active and, uh, asking a bunch of questions here. He, he's asking for the location of the ECU and the 718. Oh, space. man. Oh. Man, nightmare mode. <laughs> so, like, this is one of the main reasons that we did the uh, port flash on this car is because it's so hard to get to the CCU. It's a little easier. Yeah, and I think you might be answering Mitchell's question by telling yeah, him in so, terms of a port flash. Yeah, so, yes. Mitchell, we have, uh, we, have we have port flashing on this. You do not have to take out the ECU and mail it to us. We were the first ones to come out with this. We developed this last year, and we released it, I believe, at the end of 2019. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to take the ECU out at all. It's just right into the port, flash it, good to go. So on this car, if you uh, ever do, or if you ever to do to need it. to get to it, the ECU sits right back here behind this panel here, and yeah. then the TCU sits right back here behind this panel here on the quarter panel. Yeah, so you just got you have to take some stuff apart, which obviously nobody likes to do that. But both of those will be port flashes from us. Yeah, so. they're they're both port flashes, so it's it's no big deal. You don't have to do that. What else we got? Okay. Uh, that covers a lot of them here. That was highway drone with straight pipe. Cap so back. okay, yeah, with the with the straight pipe. Um, I found that if you have the valve closed on it, even when it's in straight pipe configuration, like drone is extremely minimal. And if you put that muffler on there, then there's like none. I thought maybe, maybe I could get a hint of drone in it um, with just nothing on it. But mostly I think it sounds, if it was my car, I would have just the straight pipe base configuration that we do. And that will also be the least expensive version of it. So that would be, that's, that has my vote. Yeah. yeah, I think that covers a lot of it. Actually, Mitchell says he was asking what the diverter does and where it was located. Oh, so. yeah, so the diverter valve, I don't know where it's located on this car. I think it's like up top here somewhere. But basically, when you let off the throttle, there's boost pressure in the system. It has to go somewhere. So there's what's called a diverter valve in the system, and that reroutes the air back to the uh, to the pre uh, pre-compressor side of the turbo. And uh, what can happen is those valves can fail over time from the factory. They've been using the same valve since like the beginning of time. So we have a different version of that valve. It doesn't have a piston in it, so there's no lubrication to the valve needed. There's nothing that can bind up and get stuck in the winter or anything like that. It's just a, a Nomex valve that 
pops up and down unless the air go out. Did you want to show them that pile of stuff over there? You can if you want to. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, this, you guys might like this. Uh, this car right here, uh, Tyler wanted to make it look a little bit more fancy. So he bought all these, so he bought all these cool aerodynamic parts. And these are actually useful, right? These are straight from the GT3 yeah. Cup car. These are all straight from Porsche Motorsport. The goal is to add aero. We're going to put a splitter on the car, add the wing in the back to actually increase the downforce on the car because the car has very little downforce from factory. It actually has a little bit of positive lift in the front of the car. So we're trying to find a way to get some more grip out of it and uh, give us the best chance at beating the GT2 RS is on track yeah. at Road Atlanta. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. we'll just imagine. That'll be so, that. You want to move on to the 992? We're going to talk yeah. about the 99. Yep. We're going to talk about 992 now? Yep, let's talk about yeah. 992. So, 992. Sorry. we're kind of moving into the new generation now, which is the current car, but there's not a ton of 992s out, but it's going to get the same treatment as we saw the other cars got. Tim has just begun. As you can see, the car is kind of dismantled at this point, but we've begun over a list of everything that we want to instrument, all the parts that need to get done. So, you see this cut side that's missing stuff, but we've done the same, just the things. We've got sensors here for the manifolds you guys asked about yeah, the testing. That's, that's so actually kind of cool because we're this manifold's a lot better yep. than the other one. We have it on every single runner. Every single runner will be instrumented and we'll have temperature and pressures coming out. We have, again, pre-turbine pressure and EGT, catalyst temperature and pressure before and after the catalyst, turbocharger speeds, yeah, it's, it's these pressure efficiency, right here. outlet uh, temperatures. This, this guy. Yeah, the shiny yeah. bits. So we're doing all the same things again to collect all the data. So this can allow us to make a reliable tune, model everything in the EC correctly, add the extra protections if they're not there from the factory, as well as validate what hardware components really need to be made so we can make this car better. So that's the really purpose behind all the instrumentation. And one, one thing that you pointed out on this is that if you look at the catalyst on this car, uh, once again, we think this is a situation where like you don't have to, t like this does nothing to change it. They've They've gone with like such a, this is humongous right here, essentially. This is absolutely it's a humongous. Very straight section here. Yeah. The diffuser is angled right at the cows, which is great because you're getting most of your flow straight through the core. You can kind of see on some of the older cars, I went to these kind of offset, so you lose some of that flow across part of the core. This one's even better. It's got even more efficiency going across it. It's a large cat. You have a nice radius outlet here, which helps reduce your pressure drop through here. It's about a two and a half inch pipe, two and a quarter inch. Don't quote me on that. But uh, same size turbocharger is what the GTS and the 991.2 runs as far as compressor and turbine wheel run. The big difference between is, it is, is yeah. this is an electronically actuated turbocharger versus the other ones are pneumatic style. Yeah, so this is very similar to what we're seeing in a lot of the Volkswagens. Um, so like the Audi S3 and the Volkswagen Golf R and the GTI, they've all gone to this uh, new style of electronic wastegate actuator. So it's kind of cool because it gives you all that extra control that you normally wouldn't get. And one nice thing is that this motor, even though it is the 992 generation, is pretty very much similar to the 991.2 motor for the most part. There are some differences in terms of injectors and pistons and compression, but for the most part, it's almost the same motor, which will give us a nice foundation for what we've tested and done before for durability to give us an idea of what this can handle. After the motor, pretty much everything else is different. You get the yeah. PDK, which is brand new, so we'll have software for that. Uh, and improve that. The nice thing about that is you have the tighter gear ratios is what really helps this car accelerate faster than the previous generation uh, since it pretty much makes about the same power out of the box. So we're pretty excited about this. Uh, we plan to do uh, intakes, inlets, intercoolers, catbacks, and then through our testing we'll see if anything else is determined. I'm sure a hybrid turbo will be in yeah. a solution as we go along. Um, it'll probably be right up there in terms of what the other career is doing. So I'm planning to run E85 for this platform as well. Um, so look out for that, and then um, it'll just be development time until it's ready. And uh, so we've already started on some of the hardware, like, as you can see, the cat back right now is removed from the car. It normally sits right here, and uh, we can show the exhaust tips are integrated into the bumper. So the exhaust tips are integrated into the bumper. All that kind of stuff, we'll probably leave that stock, and we'll just focus on making a system that is a little bit louder than stock, maybe flows better than stock, and uh, gives us like a bump in performance, but mainly it's going to be a lot less weight than stock. So the factory system over here, this is what the factory one looks like. This, this giant beefcake here, and it's uh, it's beefy. And I believe this is, is this the, is this the PSC? Is this the sport a, exhaust. Yeah, so this is the sport exhaust. So this is the more sporty version. But uh, so what we started with over here, um, this is like, a, this is a mega first article. So nothing about this is production yet. 
So what we do is we start this, this off is wide. All of, them, all of them come with Sharpie, though. Yeah, Sharpie will be standard. Um, so what they do is our engineers will figure out basically what's the minimum we can do on this system and then build up from there. So like this system has no mufflers on it. It's basically just two valves. So you have your large pipe that will be, you know, giving it the beans mode where you'll get all of the uh, sound and flow. And then your normal driving mode, which is still larger than stock. So it'll be a little bit louder than stock, but right now there's nothing on it. There's no mufflers on it. We just have the X pipe in the center here. And uh, what, what they'll do basically is we'll run this on the car and we'll figure out like, does it drone? Is it too loud? Do we need to add mufflers? You're like, what's the next step? How's the flow looking and all that? We'll take all the data and sensors. We'll add some microphones back there. And then maybe we'll come in and we'll add a muffler or maybe we'll add like a little resonator back here. There's, or maybe we have something coming off of it to eliminate drone. We basically, this is the starting point and this is kind of announcing that we are starting to make a catback exhaust system for the 992. And uh, of course, no ETA. I, I don't know how long this is gonna take. We're gonna start working on it and see where it goes. And then when it's done, you know, we take things like these brackets and all the pipes are nice and we try to make them all one bend and all that kind of stuff. All the welds will be nice and TIG welded. All the pipes will be brushed and beautiful. You know, we make this thing look good at the end. So, so a couple, couple more questions here. Jeremy had another question. Uh, Jeremy, to answer your question first, the answer will be no in terms of if the 992 manifolds uh, are gonna fit on the 991.2. Biggest, um, easiest difference you can see there is it's a four bolt flange on the 992 versus a three bolt flange on the 991.2. So right there, your OEM filler charger won't bolt up to it anyway. At that point, for probably what you're going to pay for the OEM manifolds anyway, I would just go and find an aftermarket set, whether it's tile or vector, and put those on there. Those probably be your two best bets. I don't have any uh, data yet as to how much those headers improve performance, but if that's what you're looking for, those would be the two that I see based off looking at CFD data and other stuff would be the best performing ones on the market. There's been a lot of questions about at home flashing. Yeah, yeah. Email programmers. I think the best way to answer that question right now is what we don't want to do is overcommit or overpromise to our consumers. But I can tell you with a high degree of certainty that, you know, particularly over the past 12 months, we're listening now more than ever to what really, you know, the consumer wants. So we're actively looking at opportunities and options. We have a great, tremendous and wide uh, dealer network uh, yeah. that are tremendous resources for all of our consumers. But, um, you know, to answer the question, uh, at the end of the day, ADPR is going to deliver what the consumer is looking for. So we're an active, you know, discussion. Yeah, discussion mode. It's the first... The first example of anything that we would ever do is on Porsche because it is a smaller market for us. So that's going to be our test bed of like seeing if consumers actually like the product and seeing where it goes from there. So, very cool. I think that just about covers it. One of our top fans, Taylor Rogers, is on. Oh, that's good. Um, Taylor, how are you? Uh, a couple of the folks. Really appreciate everybody chiming in with questions. This has been, in terms of genuine enthusiasm, I think that exists across everything we do here. Uh, but I can tell you, it's the equivalent of a you know, a gym rat, if you think you're putting in a long day and you're leaving, Tyler's on the dyno. Yeah. Uh, I brought my boys out here on the weekend, Tyler's on the dyno. Uh, so it's just really cool, you know, Tyler and the whole team here that are really committed to uh, investing in this program, and I think you're going to see it grow. So we encourage you to stay, you know, active with us on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> A couple of folks have been asking to, to meander back into the lobby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, hey, let's uh, look at those uh, intercoolers just real quick, because yeah. that's one thing we might touch, and people mm -hmm. might want to look at that, because it's kind of interesting. So this is the 992. Yeah, this is the 992 intercooler setup from the factory. Oh, yeah. um, it's, I mean, it's a lot of work, as you guys can see. There's a lot of plastic pieces that are integrated in here, so it's not just a, uh, it's not as simple as just popping it off and going. So we're gonna, we already have some things marked off that we're gonna start measuring, and we're gonna see if we can make some products for it. So we we would love to add some intercoolers to this car, if it needs them. So yeah, let's go back into the lobby. Uh, if you guys still have Porsche questions, feel free to ask them. If I didn't already answer them or Tyler didn't answer them, I might pop into the comments section here later and try to pick up on those and just uh, you know fill in responses right then and there. Um, but, uh, this, this is pretty cool. <laughs> hey, dangerous. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to some of you guys might and gals might know this, but we picked up a German to the United States. Now we we got this last year, but you know, with everything going on in the universe that kind of shut down the world here, but we got it all registered and 
get it all legal, I guess you could say, and we're gonna have this guy here for a year, and we're using it to get a jump start on our development. So we can already get into the ECU right now and start tuning it, but we've already uh, started working on some hardware um, that I might actually start teasing out to you guys so you can get a little sneak peek of what we're doing. But uh, this thing is, this thing is awesome. I mean, the, the rear brakes on this car are bigger than, you know, most people's front brakes. And this car is, it, like I said, this is the German spec car. So the U.S. spec car will look a little bit different, probably different ride height and uh, some orange markers and things like that. But we've got this thing fully spec'd out with like all the privacy glass, all the options inside, everything on the outside. Um, it's, it's freaking awesome. Uh, we're really excited to see this thing in the United States. And this new four liter is just it's, it's gonna be the cat's meow because we're gonna see probably 800 horsepower out of these things you know, with minimal effort. Okay, Colin, maybe to close out, we can just kind of walk either around or through, but there is, I believe, a Porsche on the dyno and we can show. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's relatively uh, a new dyno here as well. Yeah, so we have, we have four dynos at APR right now. Three of them are chassis and one of them is an engine dyno, and we've just invested in adding another in-ground dyno that we will be using for basically all of our emissions testing going forward, so we don't have to send cars out to do the testing. We can, we can sort of self sort of. Uh, yeah. You want to fire it up, or is it? It's cutting it. I can start it. Yeah. It's, it's not going to get ready for a pull, though. Oh, okay. Oil temp. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this yeah, is like this is this hybrid. is another this is another hybrid. So uh, I don't know if we're gonna lose connection here because we're walking between buildings. Uh, but if we do, you know, see you. You said see you later, and <laughs> it's oh, back. It's our local Alabama car. Yeah, yeah. This is a uh, this is a customer's car. He uh, up. Hold so on. okay. Yeah, this guy has. Uh, Sure, yeah. This is the, uh, this car has a pure turbo, larger than our GTX turbos from the factory. And uh, we're, we're fixing the software for them. And... In one of our threads, one of like the APR software threads, that's the best place to ask it. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can you can send us a message, you guys can call up here, but to get to either of us, that's the best way to do it. Go right to the so. Cool. Well, thank you everybody. I appreciate it. See you later.